Welcome to the Corona Physical Material Explained. I'm going to show you the amazing presets and stick with me till the end because there's something important that I want to tell you about how to correctly map reflections. Subscribe right now and enable the notification bell. We can immediately notice that a corona physical material shows a subtle reflections on its surface by default. Can you see it? This effect is almost imperceptible, but you can see the difference by comparing images with and without it. This effect is controlled by this parameter, which represents the roughness level of the surface the lower this value of the shiner the surface is. With the value 0, we have a perfectly gloss surface. The more we raise this value, the rougher the surface becomes. By default, its value is 0.75. For this reason, at the start, the material already has a minimum of reflection. We can appreciate this effect when we apply a new corona physical material on larger surfaces. And here are the presets, they are undoubtedly a great starting point for this material. We can in fact easily create materials simply by choosing a preset from this list. We have chrome polished, copper, but also gold, iron, transparent plastic, glass and much more. Whenever we select one of these presets, a group of parameters are automatically set and we can of course modify them. That's why I love starting from presets to create my material with just a few changes. For example, we can set a glass tinted and then modify the media options by increasing the distance value, making it more transparent. Then you can change the color according to your needs. All these materials can also be created with legacy material, but having presets available speed up your work. But there's something that may confuse you when using maps created for Glossy. Let's have a look. If in the legacy material the reflections are the result of glossiness, by default in the physical material we have the roughness. So if we want to map this property, we have to invert the way to think mapping. In this case, the lighter parts of the map correspond to rougher areas, and therefore less reflective, while the dark parts generate glossy areas. For this reason, if we use a map for glossiness into a roughness channel, we'll never get a good effect. We have to invert the colors and switch from this map to this one, which we can easily do in Photoshop. So remember to process glossy maps this way if your workflow requires a roughness channel. Or just scroll down and change roughness mode into glossiness. You'll be able to use a classic glossy map in the base layer. Do you like materials? Watch these other lessons from my channel and have a look to my full official Corona course. All the links are in the description. Ciao ciao!